Hey everybody, Jeff Schneider here. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you three piano chords that every beginning pianist needs to learn. You might have already learned these chords, in fact, but we're gonna actually play them in a way that's a little bit different, and we're gonna put the chords together into a progression that's gonna become a great exercise for you to get used to the different ways you can play these three chords. But first, do you guys remember about a month ago I was talking about this company Skillshare? I have another great opportunity for you guys if you didn't get a chance to check them out earlier in the year. So if you don't know what Skillshare is, real quick, it is an online learning community for creators with over 25,000 classes. Classes in design, business, all kinds of things. One of the classes I checked out recently that was really great was this one called Going Viral, Write Film and Make Content People Share. Super, super important if you are an entrepreneur or business owner, if you're a musician and you need to get the word out about the stuff that you do, it's a great course for you guys to be checking out. Click the link down below to get two months free of their premium membership. It's gonna give you access to all of the classes. So if you're interested in learning more about, I don't know, advertising or drawing or filmmaking, there's classes on there for just about everyone. So go check out that link down below. You'll get two months free premium membership for the first 500 of my subscribers that click the link. So let's get to these chords. We're gonna talk in the key of C major at first, but you're gonna to wanna to be able to play these chords in all 12 keys. Let's talk in C major just to make it easy for now. So the first chord we're going over, super basic, a lot of you know this one, it's a C major chord. But we're gonna also play it like this. This is called C major and first inversion. What do we do? We took the bottom note and we put it on the top. So the C was here, now it's up here. And we have the third in the bottom voice. So we have three different voices, bottom, middle, top. Now we have E on the bottom, G in the middle, C on the top. We're gonna to do the same transformation and get to the next voicing, which is C major and second inversion. Now we have the G or the fifth in the bottom voice, the C in the middle, and the E, the third, on top. If you do the inversion one more time, you get back to C. So we only have to learn this chord in three positions for now. This is called root position because the root of the chord is in the bottom voice. This is first inversion. This is second inversion. Again, a lot of you might know this already, but stick with me. This exercise that I'm getting to is gonna be a really great way for you to practice these different inversions and get really comfortable with what we're gonna call proper voice leading. Okay, let's keep going here. Now we're gonna play an F major chord. This is the four chord in the key of C major. So C is the one chord because it's starting on the one of the scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So F major, F is the fourth note of the C major scale, one, two, three, four. And we're gonna play it in root position to begin. First inversion, second inversion. It's the same technique as before. You take the note that's on the bottom, you move it to the top. Last but not least, we're gonna do G major, that's the five chord. Root position, first inversion, second inversion. Back to root position. So we have three chords and three voicings for each chord. Now, here's the exercise that I want you to practice in order to get comfortable playing with these inversions. But first, why are these inversions important in the first place? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One reason is that when you have these inversions, it will help you move from one chord to the next in a smooth way. So for instance, if I have a C major going to an F major chord, I could play it like this. But that's quite a jump. It's a jump from my hand. It's not a very smooth musical transition. But if I go from C major in root position to F major in second inversion, well, now my fingers aren't moving that much at all and everything sounds super smooth. And this is what's called good voice leading. Now the two rules I want you to keep in mind for good voice leading are one, keep your common tones where they are. What does that mean? Well, we have to ask ourselves is, are there any notes in common between C major and F major? And the answer is yes. There's a C in C major right there, and there's a C in F major right there. But the rule is keep your common tones where they are. If the C is on the bottom of the chord, we wanna keep it there. We wanna keep it on the bottom of the chord when we go to the F major. But now that we know all of the inversions for these chords, we know we can play F major like this, which keeps the C on the bottom. All right, so let's get to the exercise. The chord progression that I want you to be able to play is gonna be the one chord, going to the four chord, back to the one, to the five, back to the one. So it'll sound like this. And what I did in my left hand was just play the roots of the chord. So 
I played C for the C major chord, F for the F major chord, and so on. That way you have both hands going and it gives you a nice big thick sound. I'll do it again nice and slow. C major in root position, F major in second inversion, back to C, there's G in, in first inversion, back to C major in root position. But we're not done. Now we're going to start C major in first inversion. Let's keep the C in the left hand. We'll just do first inversion in the right hand. So now we're going to do the same chord progression. And that's perfect voice leading. That's voice leading that keeps the common tones where they are. And by the way, I did say there was another rule. Rule number two of good voice leading is for the notes that aren't common, move them as little as possible. So. For instance, if we're going from C major to F major, I have the C on top, I want to keep that where it is. These other two notes need to move to notes that belong in the F major chord, but I, I want to move them as little as possible. So this E is going to move north to the F, and the G is going to move right upstairs to the A. So those other voices that are not common tones don't have to move or travel very far, and that's what gives you that smooth sound from one chord to the next. All right, let's do one more position. We're going to start C major now in second inversion. So we have the same chord progression played three different ways. And as I said, I want you to be able to do this in all 12 keys. What would the chords be in G major? Well, we have to figure out, well, what's the one chord? What's the four chord? What's the five chord? The one chord is G major. The four chord is C major, back to one, then we have the five, back to one. So it sounds like this without me blabbering over it. Another reason why it's good to have such great control over these inversions and voicings and voice leading is because when it comes to playing a melody that's harmonized by a chord, you want to be able to put the melody note on the top of the chord. For instance, if I'm playing a simple song like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, I want to start with a C major chord, and I need to know C major in first inversion in order to keep that C on the top. And then I have G on the top because G is the next note in the melody. And then when I go to the A, I'm switching to an F chord. F is in second inversion in this case. So I'm keeping that melody note on top. So that's why it's really important to know your inversions. It's essential if you want to start learning to play songs by ear. This is how I learned how to play songs by ear. And the exercise that I showed you before is a great way to get comfortable with those voicings, the voice leading, all the inversions. And that chord progression is actually pretty common, going from the one to the four, back to the one, to the five, to the one. These are bread and butter chord progressions. So you want to have these chords under your fingers. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And if you're interested in more advanced chords, if you want to know what's going to come down the road after you master these triads, definitely check out my Sick Chords Volume 1 pack, which is available somewhere around here, and uh, that'll link to my website. So thank you guys for watching. Hope this was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.